Hi, I'm Simon. I'm one of the co-lead of the VLM project, which is an infra engine originated at UC Berkeley Sky Computing Lab. Amazing. Well, I'm so excited to chat with you today because there's so much going on with VLM. VLM in the last two and a half years had 60K stars. I think that's where it's at. Last I checked right now and 29 million downloads. And I can't believe it's only two and a half years. If for people listening, what is VLM and what is the pain point it solves? VLM is an inference engine. So what it does is to take open source large language models that you can download from Hugging Face or proprietary language model you have today to run it efficiently on data center hardware. Yeah. So think of those like GPUs, TPUs, accelerators. And the job it solves is to run those models really, really well yeah. so that you can maximally leverage the shit. You get the best tokens per second, best throughput, best latency, as well as broad compatibility across the whole ecosystem. What is some of the architectural designs you had to make, if you could take me back a little bit? So, like, pretty much VLM started initially about two years ago as a yeah. lab to focus on the best way to manage what we call KV cache memory efficiently. So this is kind of the origin of VLM, which is a paper called page attention. So the idea is to manage what the conversational states and every single token or every single word efficiently so that we can continue to maximize what we call the batch size. Think of this as number of concurrent conversations happening with the LM together in the single GPU. And over time, we kind of grow this out, efficient algorithm into better scheduling, better distributed inference, running on multiple ships, and then running on multiple nodes, yeah. and then scale out to more and more efficient model architecture of today. Uh, today, we can run trillion parameter models, uh, such as Kimi K2, on like a cluster of hundreds of GPUs today. And we're looking forward to, frankly, just grow this even more, right? I, it, it's, like, it's exploding. It's fantastic. Yeah. Like right now, there's a lot of AI workloads. What's the reason now VLLM is exploding? So a lot of AI workload today is bonded on how efficient it can be. For example, think about your conversation with ChatGPT or your usage of cursor. Wouldn't it be great you just come out faster, right? And then on the service provider side, wouldn't it be great to 2x the number of users that you can actually use? So this is where efficiency really comes in because every single token costs something on the compute cycle. So that's why VLM really is at the center where we support a whole ecosystem model on hardware so that you can run those efficiently at a great performance so that you have a lower cost of per inference token. Our fundamental goal is to build the fastest and easiest to use inference engine. This will allow you to really lower the cost of inference via our approach in open source to be able to run the best model on the best ship at the best efficiency so that when you're building product and scaling out your user base, you have a lot more rooms to play with and fundamentally a lower cost means better ways to run products as well. Yeah. Speaking of the efficiency, lower costs and all that, VLLM is known for inference. But now also with post-training, we're seeing a lot of inference also on the post-training side with reinforcement learning with human feedback and all that. What are your thoughts there uh, as, as far as that? Yeah, so VLAN is being used a lot in the reinforcement learning RO stack. In fact, we have this exact glue that is Ray. We're gluing together VLM and the training framework as well as all the scheduling and placement together. So a lot of open source RO frameworks today use VLM and Ray to exactly achieve that efficient scale out of what we call rollout stage as well as reward scoring stage. And both of the, these are the important part of the RO workflow to be able to generate sample responses, interact with the environment, and score to make sure that you are learning from the best output and best experimental rollout today. So a lot of this requires VLM to be able to be, again, high throughput, highly efficient, but also reliable, numerically stable, and deterministic, so you can debug what went wrong, is the algorithm learning the right things, as well as maximally flexible so that you can actually integrate it with however you design your RO system algorithm today. Yeah, a common question I actually get is, how do VLM and Ray work together? Yeah, so VLM and Ray actually works in a uh, pretty much kind of like a sandwich, yeah. where VLM calls Ray internally. So when you run VLM on a distributed multi-node setup, it already initialized Ray and use uh, all the Ray primitive like runtime environment placement groups. All the and then in the future, uh, what we announced today was the GPU objects, yeah. and we're looking forward to do that. Do that. And so this is where Ray leverage and use VLM. And there's a part where 
on top of Ray, you can, a lot of folks do run VM inside Ray Serve, Ray Data, in all the RO engine. So where you really see that as a Ray job or a service, you see that the framework is using VM and VM internally is using Ray. I love it. And then just collaborates and work together and integrate with other framework like the training side of things, the RO side of things, all together in the same ecosystem runtime. It's fantastic. And you know, even better, now there was a recent announcement with Ray joining the Linux Foundation and the PyTorch Self Foundation and VLLM is also part of that. What are your thoughts there regarding so, the open source? Uh... Foundation is kind of the way to go yeah. for open source project. This is where you really invite more and more user and collaborators and adopter to work together and where foundation kind of ensures the governance of the project going forward. Yeah. So it doesn't change. In fact, it doesn't really change how the roadmap is organized. It doesn't change much of how the project itself, how we get more new contributions, manage the issues, managing the technical side of things. Rather, it is there to make sure that important industry collaborators have a common governance model yeah. and to work together on it. Ray and VLM are part of the PyTorch Foundation, which originated and host PyTorch, yeah. right? And also Deep, Deep Speed, which is a yeah. training system, is also is there. It's like win winning the, the training. Yeah. yeah, and then this is where you see not just like companies working together on open source, but also the technical side of things, we have deeper integration all together. Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts, right? Because you're talking like the whole, AI, ooh, the whole AI compute stack, right? You have like the training and inference, you have the distributed computing layer, and then you have like that, the orchestration layer. Um, and it's fantastic because now technically having that uh, ability to have that governance in a step, it is in, in under the Linux Foundation. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. And I'm excited to see the contributions and hopefully the community growing with that. We're here also at Ray Summit 2025. I know you're giving a talk about the state of VLLM. Can you summarize for us, what is the state of VLLM right now? Yeah, well, so this is a talk we kind of give, we're hoping to give every year. And we'll so link it, by the way, in yeah. this video. Discussion. Last year, we talked about VLM really excel in what we call dense models in cases where we serve large Llama 405B. This year, the state of VLM really focused um, on the API side. We're becoming yeah. the universal API for people to integrate with. On the model side, we're growing the ecosystem of models still with our model providers. On the engine side, we completely revamped the engine core of the last year for better performance and better compatibility with each other. And then on the hardware side is about, again, this ecosystem of frontier ships, but also extreme accessibility so that you can actually not even work, know too much about the VM internal to be able to add new kernels, add new chips. And then finally, we're talking about the state of VLM in terms of distributed, where we really leverage Ray and our Kubernetes and different kinds of way to distribute and parallelize to make sure you can serve the biggest model of today. What are you most excited about as far as the, the upcoming updates? And I'm most excited about really getting the model and hardware team to work together. Yeah. Right? So VLM is at the center where for model providers, they always want to integrate with D0 model support. For hardware, of course, is to make sure all the new, newest and best chip are there. And I just cannot wait to everybody work together on VLM to make sure that whenever a new model comes out, it works on all the hardware on day one, right? Whenever a new chip come out, all the model all out there today will get immediate boost. So this is really much a future I'm looking towards. And exciting that it's open source. Why do you think usually we go to open source as far as AI and from? Open source is not just easy. To make sure that it has high quality software. It has places where you can go and fix bugs and, and talk about where you want it to be. And also is a way just to company invites everybody to work together. So the way I will run project is to really make sure that we can be extremely open-minded and be welcoming to whoever wants to improve. How do people start contributing also to VLM? Well, go to VLM.ai, which is our GitHub page. You can see Go First Issue, we have contributor guys, and pretty much you can go everywhere from documentation to fixing an API server, adding tests, to like, if you want to go deep, adding new models, improving distributed algorithms, or to implement the GPU kernels. There's a lot of different area and breadth that we have experimented with. We have thousands of contributors today. In fact, we're probably going to 2,000 very soon. And we really welcome everybody to join in on this effort and work together. 
It's fantastic. It's very exciting. And I feel like you can feel the, the energy also here at Race Summit 25. We have a little living room situation here, but you know, it's a, uh, you've been, question, you've been also involved in both Ray and VLLM, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, VLLM is now my first open source project. Yeah. So Ray has been in my past life, a very important part where, where I kind of learned the craft of building open source community, right? And as well as building, making sure that you are delivering what the users really want you to build. This is where I learned the PI mindset to make sure that we're building the right thing for the users. And but is where I really understood the power of community. Yeah. Uh, in fact, like I started at any scale in 2019. And this is where I, all the journey <laughs> began about open source. I love that. Yeah. That's fantastic. Was that the start of open source for you? Or what was the first time you ever got the first time I ever done open source is at Berkeley yeah. about 2017, 2018, where we like that's when Ray was incubating uh, within uh, the Sky Computing Lab. Uh, at that point, it's actually called Rise Lab. And there's another project on Influence called Clipper. That's where I really get to know and as an undergraduate student, get to know the art of open source, how do you organize a community, how do you improve feature, how do you in fact, what is machine learning serving at that point? And over time, we're seeing it evolve so much. But one thing never changed, that is open source is the way to go. Right. Yeah. And it's so you were probably at the time when RL was still in the trend, yeah. then it lost oh, some 100%. of the timing. Yeah, and then yeah. Now it's bad. What are your thoughts there? We actually um, were trying to, at that point, like 2018, 2019, Philip was a CTO of Anyscale. Like we actually tried to build a demo together where... You can serve an agent to play Pawn uh, ahead of on the your times. browser. Ahead of the exactly, times. Exactly, where Philip was demoing the PPL algorithm, demoing our lib environments. Things have really changed now. Like, we, we went from just playing games with simple signal, simple environment to really just interacting with the real world, right? It's not just about text LM anymore. It's about the video, about multimodality. It's about robotics. Yeah. So much more so is many about robotics customers. really getting it and becoming real with reinforcement learning. Right? I think like over the last like seven, eight years, we have seen the transition. But every ner every lesson learned, every paper has been contributing to what we have so far and going forward. So I'm quite excited about the future. So exciting. For some closing thoughts, any advice you would give to AI builders today? Well, let's get get it started run code, play with code, ask, leverage AI to learn better, and like just trust and keep an open mind. Yeah. Because open source community really, really wants to help you succeed as well. Yeah. And let's all work together. Yeah, let's contribute to open source and connect with the community. Simon, thank you so much for being here. You're absolute natural on camera. 